In this video, I'm going to be discussing using the background eraser tool with image extract. When you click the background eraser button, it's going to select the background eraser tool in your Photoshop tool menu. It is also going to select the image extract layer, which is the foreground layer. Now importantly, it's going to select the layer itself and not the mask. So you can often use selecting mask and the background eraser tool for similar situations. There's times when each of those work better than the other. But the main difference is the selected mask is going to work on the mask, so it's going to work non-destructively. The background eraser tool is going to work on the layer itself, so it works destructively onto the layer. Often that doesn't matter, but um, just be aware of that. And then once you merge it, it's not going to matter anyway. You'll get the same finished result either way. So what I like to use the background eraser tool for is for little areas like this in the hair that may need touched up and also some other little areas like you see these little white areas that the artificial intelligence um, select subject missed some of these little white areas because it's looking for shape and it's not really looking for color so sometimes it misses these little areas and those are really simple to touch up with the background eraser tool and a lot quicker than the select and mask and often you actually get better results so once it selects the tool for you, you still have to make sure your tool options are set properly because it's not going to set those for you. So very importantly, you need to make sure the sample once is selected. Also, use discontiguous. And for tolerance for white screen, somewhere around 40% is a good starting point. And that's for white screen image. Now, if your background is cluttered and not a solid color, this tool often doesn't work as well because it's difficult to sample the exact color you want. But for the case of a lasso light extraction like this, it's very easy to use this tool. Now we're on the foreground layer, and what Sample Once does is when you click the mouse, wherever the crosshair of your tool is, that is the color that it's going to try to erase within a certain tolerance. And if we click outside the hair here, we know that that is white, although we're not seeing white, we're seeing blue, we're seeing the layer behind it. But it's actually sampling the layer it's on here, so it's going to be sampling the white. So very importantly, don't in an area like this where you see the white showing through, don't try to click on the white in there because there's too many little hairs and stuff in there. And it's going to be really difficult to sample white and that's actually not even pure white, it's like a blend of white and brown, so it's like a kind of an off-white in those little areas. Just let me demonstrate here, so if we click outside the white and keep the mouse um, button down and then you drag in, and for as long as you're holding the mouse down, it's going to be erasing those areas. And it only does the sampling the first time we click, and we can drag in anywhere we want but it's only sampled once that white area. Now the difference is if you have, um, trying to get the little, why is it not showing the, there we go, sample background swatch or sample contiguous. I don't know why the, the words weren't popping up, but sample contiguous, if you're on this, I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen. So if we click and drag, it's continuing to sample as we drag, so it's first sampled white, but as we drug into the hair, it's resampling the brown color of the hair to remove. So it's continually changing the, the target color to remove. So that's why it's very important to make sure you're on this sample once. And this sample um, swatch is not what we want. It's going to sample the background swatch, whatever that color is. So just make sure it's on sample once. And discontiguous means that um, if it Contiguous means that it will stop once it gets to an area that's not the sample color, and discontiguous will sample within that entire circle whether it reaches any boundaries or not, if that makes sense. Anyways, just use these settings to start with. If your tolerance is, um, if it's erasing too much, you can decrease your tolerance, but if you go too low, you see it's not erasing anything. If you go too high, you see that you can partially erase that hair. 
I'm going to go back to 40%. So one more thing I want to show. So after this is erased, we actually could have went maybe even a little higher. So if you see, still see a little bit of fringing, you know, bump it up a little bit. I don't know, somewhere in there. And I mentioned before that this was a destructive adjustment. And what I mean by that, if we click on the mask here, we don't see those transparent areas in the mask because the transparency is not being applied in the mask. If I throw the mask away, turn off all of the other layers. So now we're looking at only the um, foreground layer itself and nothing else. Everything else is turned off. And you can see that we've directly applied transparency to the um, foreground layer. So if you erase something that you don't want to erase, you're not going to be able to get it back if you're using the background eraser tool. So just keep that in mind. However, once you merge into a single layer, you're going to get the same results here. The final result is fine. It's going to look similar to as if you did the selected mask, but just know that it is um, destructive, as I mentioned, because it's not being applied to the mask. It's being applied directly to the layer. So I'm going to do a demonstration here and actually show that more, but also talk about something else. So if you're trying to touch up an area, and this was a white screen image, but um, you see the floor is pretty dirty, and so the floor is not actually white anymore. And this area between the shoelace and the shoe got erased. So if you're trying to touch up something like this, so wherever you click that little crosshair, it's going to sample that color. So you see this dirty area is almost the same color as the shoe here. So if we click on that, it's erasing the shoe and the lace because those um, areas were really dark. Now, if we click on this little area that's more white, you see we're not really erasing the shoe, but we're not erasing those darker areas either. So something like this is a little more difficult to use with the background eraser tool. And as mentioned, again, this is a destructive adjustment. So if you erase part of the shoe, you can see that that's now directly applied to our layer because I've got everything else off except for the foreground layer and you're not going to be re able to recover those areas back. Whereas if you had done this with the background eraser tool and had that inside the mask instead, if we click on the mask, you see that that transparency is not being applied in the mask. So if you had done the background eraser tool, it, the transparency would be applied in the mask and not the layer, so you would be able to go paint that back in. And the last areas that, um, like I mentioned, that often need touched up are these little white areas here. Often like in these little creases and stuff, it misses those. Those are really usually super simple to touch up. Just grab the background eraser tool with those settings I mentioned. 50% is probably good for this. You can click outside of the area again. Click once and then drag out oh, too much here. So. Like I say, 30 to 50 is usually your range. If it's erasing more than what you want, even a little bit there it happened. Once you get the tolerance that works for your images, it's um, usually pretty quick and easy to touch those areas up. And then like I say, once it's erased, even though it is destructively applied to the layer, it doesn't matter because once you merge, it's all a single layer anyway, and everything is extracted as it should be here. So anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps you out to use the background eraser tool with image extract.